This is a force table. What's going to happen is we will attach masses to the ends of the three strings here and then drape the string over the pulley and we'll try to get equilibrium. Let me point out a couple things here. One, these are known as super pulleys, at least that's the way they're advertised, and they spin really nicely. You can sort of tell that thing is, keeps going. We want the only forces of significance to be the tension in the strings acting on the central object, and the tension in the strings should come complete, as much as possible from the weight of the masses that we will be hanging off the edge end here. And that thing is still going. We have some other pulleys that don't work as well, which would introduce friction and we want to minimize that as much as possible. Other thing is that we want the forces on acting on the ring here to all be on the same plane. So we want the strings to be as parallel as possible. And so we might need to adjust these, uh, the pulleys some to make sure that happens. We also want to make sure that the pulleys are moving freely. They're not rubbing against the edge right there. and they all seem to be moving nicely. One other thing is that the angle here, there are angles on the force table as is. The angle right here, there's a little notch right there in the middle of the pulley, and I'm hoping that you can see that well enough. And so right now, this pulley is in between 40 and 41 degrees, and that would be about 40.2. That's my estimate, maybe 40.3. This one right here, Looking at that, that is between 285 and 290. Again, the notch right there. And that looks like closer to 286 than 285. So I'm going to go to, yeah, it looks like about 285.7 to me. And then the last one. Now these are not numbers that you need to write down. This is just sort of demonstration of how do you read the angle. And that's between 138 and 139, so it looks like about 138.8 is the way it looks to me. When you're doing this, you need to make sure that it is not off kilter like that. Uh, so you want to make sure it is flush, that this edge here is flush against the rim as best as possible. So I will now pause it and set up for the first part A. I do want to point out one of the reasons for the pin in the middle is sort of two purposes, but the main one at this point is to make sure that the whole thing doesn't go careening. Because I just put the first mass on here, that's a 100 gram mass, and it is pulling. If the pin were not there, the whole thing would go falling off in that direction because these strings aren't tied to anything. Later on, when it's centered properly, we should be able to pull the pin out and nothing moves. So something to check for, you will see later on. We have 150 grams hanging here, 100 grams there. And so the question is, what do we put on the other one so that it will stay in balance? Do note that if that's, one, if that's 150 grams and that's 100 grams, in other words, I have 250 grams, anything bigger than 250 grams on this one, and it should not balance at all. If it does balance, then there's additional forces involved. So I want, if I take the two smallest masses and I add them together, that should be bigger than the third mass. And so that is a check. Sometimes I see it. So if I put 250 over there, it, it should barely balance. Actually, it shouldn't balance because I can't get these quite directly opposite. But that is a guide. I have 200 grams over here. So again, we have 100, 150. Those add up to more than 200, so we should be good. This is actually equilibrium. It's not what we need to do in order to do the lab because now the angles are all completely off because these angles assume that the vertex is right there at the center and is definitely not. So if I pull this out, it should move and collapse. It doesn't always collapse like that. All right, that last collapse, part of that is I didn't have Texas Pete in there. I guess it was just barely stable enough. Uh, so now I need to adjust these until I get it balanced, and so I will do that. Now notice that since it is pulling that way, it means I need to shift these probably closer to together over here. And actually, let's see if we can get some of this up. 
So I'm loosening this one over here and just shifting it around. And notice that the ring is pulling back towards the center. Now, is it perfectly centered or not? Well, I can sort of judge that. From an overhead point of view, it is definitely not centered. If I remove the pin. So we're starting to get close there, where it is looking almost centered, but still a little bit off. So it's being pulled that way just a little bit too much. So if I move this one over a little bit, we should have a little bit more success. And I'm going to leave Pete in there in case something goes wrong. And the Texas peat pens, we had a whole bunch of Texas peat pens. Now we're down to just two. Uh, the whole reason they're in this room is for this lab. So as I shift that way, looks like a little bit more success there. I'm making sure that the pulley is flush against the side. Go overhead again. We are looking better there. But still not as ideal as I would like. The more this is this lab more than a lot of more than like probably any other lab, the more time and care you, you take to get perfection, the better the results are. Because you really can get some nice results with this lab if you spend the time. Now I do want to point out we are assuming that these strings here are have no significant mass and so that we are ignoring them. All right, so now how centered are we? Now there's parallax, so I mean obviously I can make it look like it's centered, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna pull the camera off to the side and do an actual bird's eye view here. That's looking pretty good to me. It's hard to tell because again parallax even from my own point of view there. I don't think I'm gonna get much better than that. So at this point it's a matter of, oh, we do need to check one other thing. We need to make sure that the strings are parallel to the table. That one's a little bit high there, so let me adjust that. All right, the question is, are those strings parallel to the table? Uh, looking at the white string and comparing it to the mortar in the background or the window frame, it's looking parallel. and that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do much better than that. Now, notice part of the string is touching the table right there. And again, assuming that that is not having a significant effect, considering it's yarn. All right, so the angle, this is the 200 gram mass. And I say 200 grams, we haven't actually measured the mass yet. Uh, we'll do that. And I need to move the string out of the way. That's, that's still centered after the small fine adjustments. So now, um, so there is the center of the screen. There we go. All right, so that is the one that had the 200 gram mass. And 200 grams in quotation marks, we'll find the mass in just a moment. This is the 100 gram mass. Let's see how close can I get it and still stay focused there. That's a little bit better. So you got, so between, well, you can read it yourself. And this is the 150 gram mass. and you can get the estimated digit there. So at this point, we need to find the mass. I zeroed it using, there's a small adjustment thing over here. So I zeroed it. We're not gonna do 10 measurements here and come up with uncertainty. Sorry about that. So that is zeroed. So now I'm gonna put the 100 gram mass on. This is the 100 gram mass. It should come out to 100 grams.
it, you know, I would expect it to be close. Uh, that was just a little bit off, so. Too much. And there we go. So back one is on zero, middle one's on 100, and this one is, and you can do an estimated digit from that. Recognize that that one represents one gram, and so each of these marks is a tenth of a gram. All right, so that's the 100. So I'm pulling that off, making sure it's still zeroed, or if I need to do some adjustment because it got knocked around a little bit. And it looks like there's some adjustment required. And I'm really not gonna do much better than that. All right, so next is the 150. So 150 grams there. So that's a starting point. It should be close to 150. Even though I think the manufacturer basically gives plus or minus 10% for the what's marked on there, it's usually much better than that. And so looking at that. All right, so we're a little bit off there. So it's going to be just slightly less than 150. So put that on four. It's looking pretty darn close. All right, so you can see where the back one is and the middle one, and then here with the estimated digit. So you're looking to see where the widow's peak hits, or the, the little notch there. I guess it's not the opposite of a notch. The indicator pointing down. There's a clear one. All right, so now it's time for the 200. All right, so there's nothing on it, and all of the counterbalances are off to the left there. And let's see if how much we need to adjust it. Uh, it looks like we need to adjust it a little bit there. I'm probably not going to do much better than that. You might look at that and go, I'm way off, but you know what? That's the difference between us. So now we put the 200 gram mass on. And let's start this out at 200. Let's see where this thing ends up. Right, so it looks like we need to go a little bit more than 200. It might be my imagination, but I think that's balanced. So you can see where the back balance is, or the back mass is, the middle one, and then here. All right, so that is the 200 gram mass, or the marked 200 grams. It is time to set up for Part B. This is the setup I had before, except now I've got a fourth string here. Obviously, nothing on the end of the string yet. The other masses are the ones that we just measured, so we don't need to re-measure those masses. So I have the 200 over there, the 100, and the 150. And the angles are going to change, but we need to add another mass here. So the sum of the three smallest must be bigger than whatever the largest one is in order for it to even remotely balance. And so the question is, what am I going to stick over there? I can either go high or low. So put a 50 on there or 250. I'm going to go 250. I'll put 250 over there. So I have 250 grams, and that's in quotation marks. We'll find the actual mass in a moment. That's 250 right there. And notice it is straining, so we need to readjust. So first thing is uh, let's pull the 200 over in this direction. So I'm loosening up the screw on the bottom, moving this around. 
Now it's pulling too far over there, so let me adjust that one. This is the 150. Oop, looks like Pete's in trouble. All right, so at least at this point, we have some equilibrium. It's not it's definitely not centered yet, but we're close. Put that in there in case something goes wrong. Uh, so let's see. I need to pull it. I need to pull it in that direction. So let's adjust this again. Oh, and before we get too far, let's get this string in line with the others. I'm really going to get them. All right, we're going to settle on that. Let's see how centered we are. And really darn close. Uh, so let's do some small adjustments here. And I'm going to pause this while I do the small adjustments. All right, so I've made adjustments here, and if I get that centered, there we go. So that is really close, and uh, you know, there's this parallax issue. But yeah, I, I when I look at it from overhead, it looks like it's set. So I'm going to go with this. So we have. Oh, let me put Texas Pete back in. I'm not going to play with the wires here. So this is the 100 gram mass. We've already found the mass of that one. And there's the angle right there. And you can see the notch. So you can get an estimated digit. And then over here, this is the 200. Pull that off to the side. And you can see that angle right there. And there's the notch. Here's the 150. We also found the mass of this one, and something just fell in the other room. So you can see where that one is. You can see where the notch is. And then, so that's the 150. Now the 250 grams. Let's pull that off to the side. And you can see where that notch is. So what's left is to find the mass of the 250 grams. So let's see how balanced this is. It's looking pretty darn good. So now let's get the 250 on it. Again, I'm calling it 250 because that's labeled as 200 grams and that's labeled as 50 grams, but at least it gives us a starting point. So 200, 50. Looks like just slightly above 250, so let's go to 240 there, and 
And I think that's going to do it there. So you can see what the the back counterbalance is, the middle one, and then this one. And you see where that little bit of a divot knock goes down, and that will get you an estimated digit. And the rest is analysis and drawing with perfection. I do want to point out that it does require using a protractor and a ruler. You can find those online if you don't have one. You don't need to go out and buy one. You can print one. You can print a protractor and you can print a ruler if need be. Assuming you can print, I'm making that assumption. If you have issues with getting a protractor or a ruler, then let me know and we'll try to figure out what a plan C is. Plan A is you already have one. Plan B, you print one out. Plan C, don't know yet, depends on your situation.